about each of the different disclosures that are made and which are significant and which are insignificant? Yeah, no more than you would put a gun to your head or just dive off in the water with cement around your ankles. No. Uh, what you're going to do, at least my suggestion, I don't know, you, you may have a company policy on this. What I would strongly suggest is when the seller's property questionnaire information comes in from the seller, I would treat it just like what I recommend when you get records from City Hall or County Hall on a property. You're going to give it to the buyer with a cover letter. And you can put it in your own in your own style. But basically, I want to say in that cover letter on South Bay Brokers letterhead, dear valued client, enclosed is the seller property questionnaire or the city hall or building department records, whatever information that I've received. Here's everything I got from city hall, everything I got from the seller. Here it is. Please review this information carefully as there may be items which you find significant. Please do not misunderstand everything in this disclosure may not be significant to you, but this is information to help guide you in making your decision. You may want to discuss this with an expert in whatever field. You may want to discuss this with a lawyer or construction expert, okay? But this information is, is hopefully going to be of help to you in your decision to continue with the transaction. I'm really glad to be your realtor on behalf of South Bay Brokers, realtor, okay? Now you've just sent a wonderful PR letter. You've sent a letter that expresses your care for your client. And you've also done a risk management home run, okay? Because you've documented, you're not making any recommendations about what they should think about this information. You're not translating, evaluating, and interpreting it. Here it is, client. Boy, you really might want to consult the appropriate expert, as Section 4 of the Seller Property Questionnaire recommends you do, okay? Now, there's, there's a great way to handle that information. I would run like crazy from telling clients what they should think about any of those disclosures. Go get advice, client. You know, you may think differently about, about a parking easement than I do. It's, it's your unique requirements and your unique needs. So my closing tip on this is transmittal letters are not only great public relations, but they're, uh, they're also great risk management tools. Uh, they don't need to be overly negative. Don't write them like the lawyer would write them. Okay. <laughs> Uh, write them as you would write them that expresses care and concern, documents the limitations of your expertise and your representation, and oh, by the way, uh, recommends they go to the appropriate expertise, and then you've protected yourself and you've protected the brokerage so you can last in this, in this profession a lot, lot longer. Now, you'll notice I haven't gone over any of the indi individual 41 questions because to do so would be absolutely inconsistent with the advice I've just given you, wouldn't it? Why do we need to discuss the ins and outs of what these 41 questions mean if we're telling our clients we're not going to interpret these questions or your answers for you? Okay. Having said that, however, I would love to open the floor now. I'd like to know, we've been using this form four years. It's been company policy for you for years. What are the questions, what are the problems that you're experiencing with the SPQ? Yes, ma'am. Um, WebForms allows us to type in the SPQ uh, what the Okay, the question is, uh, if the client sends us like a handwritten handwritten uh, notes they've scrawled all over the SPQ so that it's more legible, can we retype it and just put it in wind forms on the SPQ? I would say absolutely, to use a legal term, absolutely freaking not. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. You are not, no. You are not the scrivener, you're not the interpreter, or the translator. If they have illegible notes, then you're going to go back to the listing agent and say, listing agent, the, the, the SPQ is illegible. Can you please can you please have the seller uh, type this, dictate this, this? We can't make what they're saying here. Was that your question too? What if you attach their notes? What if you take the notes when you're sitting with them and then write it on the question no. you're for them? No. 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 no, 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 and then attach the notes to no. the SPQ? No, 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 no. no. You, I I was your fingerprints should not be on this except for the fact that you're giving it to them and telling them, please protect yourself. Yeah, yeah, don't, 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 don't. See, because, you know, the, there's an old saying, and it's a horribly cynical saying, no good deed goes unpunished. That would be a classic error, because if anything goes wrong, if you've misinterpreted something, uh, you've underlined something, uh, you just can't win. You cannot win. So either tell the seller to re rewrite it more legibly, or then give it to the buyer and say, look, I honestly can't read this, maybe you can. 
and, and maybe the fact that it's an illegible would make be a, is a buyer that might be significant to me and whether I'm feeling comfortable about this. Yes, sir. When the seller's filling it out, I think it's good to have dialogue. For example, I'm closing an escrow tomorrow, and there was a plumbing, and they, they were saying, well, we, we snaked it last year, but I'm sure they snaked it several times. So I absolutely told them to put it in there, and then the uh, buyer had it, uh, a camera go down, and later on we negotiated $19,000 worth of plumbing issues that have been fun after the fact. Yeah. So, um, I do think that uh, conversation before they fill it out helps. Yeah. Well, and, and this is a key thing, too. It, the, the whole point of this is I know that we're stirring up trouble with the SPQ, right? We're stirring up trouble because, but this trouble we're stirring up is before close of escrow. I'm dealing with a, a very high-end property in La Jolla right now where my client is buying a multi-million dollar property, and during escrow, they discovered some really nasty uh, dry rot and mold in, in a plumbing area in the kitchen. Well, and my client says, well, can I sue him for this? No, you can't. You can't because you, you can cancel the transaction. You have no lawsuit at all. So thank your lucky stars, you found out about this before escrow, so that if you really don't wanna, if, if you really don't wanna deal with this problem, you can cancel and walk away. Absolute, scot-free, get your deposit back, okay? So, so this, we're trying to stir up these problems ahead of time, just look like your situation. So I, that's a great point. Yes, ma'am. Yikes. I have personal yes. knowledge that it's probably yes. Yeah. But you're saying we're not supposed to get involved when they're filling it out either. So right. what do you do? Right. The question is, okay, so so with the client that's the client says everything's perfect, right? And but you know you know for a fact something's not perfect. What do we do? Because you told us we're not supposed to fill out the SPQ. Okay. Yes. As I said, you're not gonna fill out the SPQ, but when you have actual knowledge, whether you do it in the AVID, whether you do it with a cover letter. In some fashion, you're going to have to, in writing, disclose what you know. Now, your seller, again, they may not be dishonest, they may be sloppy, or they, or they, may, uh, or they may not know what you know, because maybe this is the third time you've sold that house. But yeah, you you got, you, you're going to need to dis know the, the TDS, the TDS, what? Uh, that's yeah, not your disclosure. Yes, Jim? We want it on the Abbott. On the Abbott, that's the policy here. Okay, that's an absolutely fine policy. I would have an addendum to the Abbott, even though it's not necessarily a visual disclosure you're making, that's a great place for it because that's your disclosure, okay? So I would absolutely agree with that. It, that's a really good policy. Um, yes, in the very back. The Abbott provides a place, Kelly, where you, know, you can put other material issues, material yeah. issues, and I think that's what should go on the Abbott unless it's so long that you have to see, see an addendum. I, and it makes it's just something they don't want to talk about. I think the material issue has to be disclosed. Right. The, the comment is the Abbott has and other material issues. That's exactly the, the logical place to make these disclosures when you know something a seller doesn't, because that is your disclosure. The TDS is not your disclosure. So I, I think that's a great policy. Yes, ma'am. This is just an uh, off-the-wall situation, but I'm sure some of us are going to encounter this. There's a lot of new construction in the LA basin, but the builders asking us realtors come bring your buyer here we'll give you a referral but they don't let you use any of our form i mean the buyer has to sign their contract then there's no uh sp um fq right it, none of those forms are involved we just get a referral fee for bringing them to the project and registering them but what if you have been representing a buyer through looking at other properties, now you're on this type of situation. How much should we be much right. advi advising them right. to, yeah. I mean. Well, it's a great, it's kind of a two part question, just to recap for the video. Uh, some developers are not even allowing the use of car forms. They have totally their own documents. They're not gonna agree with an SPQ. Mm -hmm. and, and how do we handle that? And, and it kind of implied in that is, well, how do we handle our ABID responsibilities too with those? Um, <clears throat> couple of couple of points. First of all, uh, we are seeing more and more developers just completely rejecting the car forms entirely, having their own boilerplate documents that are adhesion based. There are no, there are no negotiation about those terms. It's take it or leave it. Um, those are that's a red flag for you. Okay, first red. I'm not saying don't do it, 
But I would absolutely warn your client, okay, first of all, this is somebody who's insisting that they not use the 